Right, okay, I'm doing this because I want you to um, know a little bit about benzene chemistry um, before the lessons um, on Friday and uh, next week. So I'm just going to turn on the screen sharing so you can see what I'm doing. So hopefully you can see that. Let me just check about it on the right screen. Yep, okay, that's in the right place. Okay, so I'm going to start by um, comparing how benzene reacts and a um, couple of other chemicals, which if you're doing A2, you'll have come across. So if I take um, this molecule, CH2, CH2, carbon carbon double bond, that will react with chlorine to make CH2Cl, CH2. Cl in an addition reaction. So this is electrophilic addition because we've got this chlorine um, and you get a induced dipole on there and it gets attracted to this, this double bond electrons here and you get this addition reaction going on. So this is electrophilic addition. I just change my pen side, I think, actually. That's a bit better. Um, okay, so that's an alkene. And uh, if I take a, a halogen alkene, that's better. Okay, so that would be chloroethane. And I react, whoops. Sorry, let's start again on that one. If I take CH3, CH3, so we'll take an alkane and react that with chlorine. What happens is you get a substitution reaction going on uh, and HCl. So we've swapped one of these hydrogens for chlorine. And this is a reaction that if you're doing AS, you'll be doing at the moment. And this is um, a free radical uh, substitution. Okay. Um, benzene, on the other hand, does it slightly differently. If you react benzene with chlorine, what happens is that you get chlorobenzene. So you only get one chlorine going on, a bit like this, and you make HCl. And this is um, a substitution reaction again. Um, but this time, rather than being electrophilic substitution, uh, addition, this is nucleophilic uh, substitution. Okay, and you might think, well, where's the nucleophile? Um, whoops. And you doing this in the evening was a mistake. Not nucleophilic substitution. Electrophilic substitution. Okay, because we've got loads of electrons in here and um, something's been attracted to them. So these are three reactions of three different hydrocarbons with chlorine and three different mechanisms, three different ways in which the reaction occurs. With benzene we've got this electrophilic substitution. And to make this reaction work what you need is aluminium chloride as a catalyst. <clears throat> and what's going on is the aluminium chloride reacts with the chlorine to make a complex ion AlCl4 minus plus Cl plus and Cl plus is your electrophile 
So that's what's going to attack the benzene ring. So if we look at this mechanistically, the benzene ring gets attacked by Cl+. These electrons move between a carbon atom and that uh, Cl plus ion. Normally think of a Cl minus ion rather than a Cl plus ion, but in this case you get a Cl plus ion. Breaks the delocalization in this ring, so we've got a positive charge there because some that carbon's effectively lost the electron to this chlorine now, so it's in this bond here. We've still got a hydrogen on there, and what happens is these electrons go in there and restore the delocalization and create a benzene ring with a chlorine on and liberate H plus and the H plus will react with the LCL4 minus to reform your catalyst ALCL3 aluminium chloride and it will produce your other product which is HCl so this is electrophilic substitution. So what you need, crucially, is this electrophile over here. And in the reactions of benzene, the first step is always the production of this electrophile. And we'll look at the production of a number of different electrophiles so we can substitute a number of different things onto uh, benzene rings. But what I'm going to do is just summarize some of the reactions. And this is really what I want you to know before the next lesson. So I'm going to sort of do this down here and I'm going to have a benzene ring, slightly wonky benzene ring, but I'm mine. And the first one is Cl2 with aluminium chloride, which you've just seen, and that makes chlorobenzene. If you want to brominate a benzene ring, you would normally use not aluminium chloride as a catalyst, but iron 3 bromide. But essentially the same thing is happening, and you get bromobenzene. And that's another reaction. Uh, other things we can add on to benzene ring are an alkyl group. Well, we'll come on to an alkyl group. Um, let's just have a something like a methyl group um, and let's add, put a methyl group on so CH3Cl so this reaction is a bit like this but rather than having a chlorine on there and a chlorine we've got a methyl group and a Cl We're using the same catalyst AlCl3 and whenever we use the AlCl3 catalyst this needs to be anhydrous. Because aluminium chloride reacts, hydrolyzes with water, so you need to have this in a solvent that's uh, dry. So normally dry ether would be a suitable solvent to do this reaction in. So you do that. Let's go back red. And that would make methylbenzene which is that compound, better known as toluene. Um, there's more things we can add on to a benzene ring. Related to this one is what we call alkylation. So rather than adding just a methyl group on, we're going to add something with a carbon-oxygen double bond. We're essentially going to make a ketone. And to do that, we need an acid chloride. And we use the same catalyst, aluminium chloride. And this time we make uh, a ketone. And this compound here would be called phenyl because the benzene ring is acting as a side group here to this um, ketone, really. Phenyl um, ethanone because you've got two carbons here and it's a ketone, so it ends in O N E. So you could do that. <coughs> And the final reaction I'm going to put in here that I want you to know is um, what we call nitration. And this is adding an NO2 group, which is a nitro group. 
And to do this, you need a mixture of HNO3 and H2SO4, so a conch sulfuric and conch nitric, both concentrated. So you mix this rather evil mixture up together. And if you want mono nitration, you do less than about 55 degrees centigrade. These other ones you could um, heat up and uh, heat under reflux. This one you'd do at less than 55 degrees centigrade. Um, and then you'd make a compound known as nitrobenzene. And this is one that will be important in dye chemistry because you can turn nitrobenzene into um, aniline or a phenylamine, which is used to make dyes. So another reaction I'll put on here is if you take tin metal in HCl, you can convert that into, this is a redox reaction, to phenylamine. And that is what we use to make things like azo dyes. Um, if you cook that up at uh, greater than 55 degrees centigrade, what you'll get is uh, multiple nitro groups going onto your benzene ring. And if you cook it up for long enough, you'd get a trinitrobenzene. Something like that. Which is not very clearly drawn, but uh, gives you an idea. Now these <coughs> core reactions are ones that you need to know the reagents for, so chlorine, um, the conditions, anhydrous dry ether, less than 55 degrees centigrade, and so on. The catalyst that we're using, aluminium chloride or iron 3 bromide in these cases. Um, and you need to be able to apply them to a wide range of different cases. And one thing which often comes up is to be sort of comparing the mechanism of benzene chemistry, which is this electrophilic substitution compared to the free radical substitution of alkanes and the electrophilic addition of um, alkenes. But that's what I want you to have a look at and uh, review before we um, meet again. Okay, I'll leave it there.